What up, Casanovas? Today, I'm going to teach you how to sexualize an interaction. So get ready for some killer techniques. All right, now what does it mean to sexualize an interaction? So essentially, it's the introduction and the nurturing of a sexual element in the dynamic between you and the girl. What's that, you say? It's essentially a form of flirting where you're helping the girl imagine the idea of you and her doing the deed. Now, as she begins to imagine this, she subconsciously starts to flirt with the very idea of you and her having sex. Now, why do it? Well, essentially it helps establish a more romantic or seductive frame or tone to the interaction instead of a friendly one. It helps to convey a sexual intent. So she's not left guessing, what does this guy want from me? Now, while you don't need to sexualize an interaction to create sexual tension or to convey intent, it certainly helps to amplify it. Okay, so how do you do it? How do you sexualize an interaction? Well, there are many ways that you can go about it. One is by using a seductive vocal undertone. So for example, if you ask a girl what her favorite dessert is, and she says creme brulee, you can respond with something like, oh yeah, what is it about creme brulee that you like so much? You slept with your professor, I like it. I really wish I did, but uh, no, I did not. He was married. He didn't make so a move? He did not make a move, no. Been there. Right? Should have gone to office hours, there. But... Yeah, you should have been like, hey, uh, I need a little bit of extra tutoring. Oh my God, I wish. What is it, finance? He wants to, uh, finance? He wants to yeah, time value of money, can you explain that to me? <laughs> She's like, no, no, no. At least I have, I have something good to do. Not drugs. Oh, not drugs. <laughs> not drugs. You know what kind Only of bad drugs. people do drugs. You know what kind of drugs I'm talking about? Which kind? Do not fool Which kind of drugs? Do not fool me. Which kind? And it's not just about the vocal tonality. This can go hand in hand with a squint, a suggestive smirk, a tilt of the head very intense, seductive eye contact as you drop your head. You see what I'm doing there? Yeah? You like that? Tell me more about that creme brulee. Ava, you need to stop trying to impress your parents. I'm not. They don't want... I'm not impressed. They don't want what's best for you. <laughs> I know. I want what's best for you. <laughs> oh. Are you married? Yeah. Are you in a very committed relationship? I just don't want to see any other I will fight for you. <laughs> you know I will. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I will make you guacamole. <laughs> I'll make you guacamole. Alternatively, you can use innuendo, which is essentially an indirect, suggestive remark, something that alludes to or hints at the sexual. So, for example, um, let's say you're vaping, right, or juuling or whatever, and the girl, you know, asks you to use it, and she's she asks, well, how do I use this thing? You say, well, just put it in your mouth and suck. Now, you could also tell the girl she smells good, especially if she actually does. You know, I like to point this out if I appreciate the way the girl smells. You could say, wow, that smells nice. What are you wearing? And then just lean in and slowly smell her, right? And you can combine that with, again, a seductive undertone and say, wow, that smells really nice. You're seducing me with your scent, Amanda. As opposed to something more neutral where, wow, that's a, that's a really nice smell. I like that. Which is more of a neutral compliment and has its own place. You smell pretty good. I know. Like a fresh waterfall. I don't know, tropical waterfall. With papayas. <laughs> then there's physical touch, but a more sexualized version of it. I'm not talking about a handshake or a high five or a tap on the shoulder. I'm talking a hand massage or stroking or skimming the inside of her forearm slowly as you gaze down at it or the neck. Don't turn, don't turn. Just be chill, be cool. I'm 
actually looking for my friend. So Which like, friend? I'm kind of worried. <laughs> Which friend? Your hair is very long. And lastly, you could explicitly talk about sexual content. So, for example, maybe sharing some crazy stories you've had. Maybe how you were vacationing in Europe and you met this girl who was a nymph and she always wanted to have sex and you guys were on your way to some temple. Okay, this actually happened to me. Some ancient ruins outside of Athens and you stopped by the side of the road on the beach and just had sex in the water and how you know there were people not too far from you but the girl didn't seem to care and it was really crazy. Perhaps you get on the topic of porn and ask her what genres of porn she likes. Recently I was talking to a girl and somehow we got on the topic of you know how loud she is when she orgasms. Are you looking at my color? What? Looking at your area, yeah, your color. And so just so you know it's called choker. So you should call it color. Choker. Do you like any chips? Yeah, see that's why she I shouldn't be wearing this. Like that's like I think most girls comes to your mind. I think most girls enjoy getting choked during sex. Yeah. Am I right? Hair pulled, choked. Oh, yeah, exactly. Now the time and place for these kind of conversations can be important, context can be important and sometimes it's, you need to bear that in mind, but that doesn't mean that you can't randomly bring these kind of things up. This not only contributes to the building up of the sexual tension, but it also helps to establish a deeper sense of rapport. It uh, suggests that you are at ease talking about you know, topics related to sex, they don't have any hang-ups or insecurities about it. And that helps the girl be a lot more at ease, be more comfortable uh, hanging out with you, connecting with you, and of course being more comfortable with the idea of having sex with you. Like with anything else, it's important to calibrate when you try to sexualize an interaction. You don't just do it nilly-willy whenever you please, because that could really sabotage the interactions. I would recommend injecting humor to the sexualization of your interactions, especially in the early stages, because while that does, you know, lessen or dilute the sexual tension that it essentially also helps to build, it doesn't come off as overly intense or aggressive. If you want to add an extra layer of humor to your sexualized remarks, you know, if you want to play it safer, then you can introduce some kind of uh, an accent. Hey, mommy. I like the way you're licking that ice cream. It's very seductive. Tell me, do you like getting your hair pulled? We're all just animals after all. We have our primal instincts. My God, you are most ravishing, Amanda. Your red dress contours your body like a snake. So again, this helps to dilute the intensity of the sexualized remark while you're still maybe gauging uh, where this girl's at. You know, is she playing along? Is she enjoying herself when you're making these remarks before you start to amp things up? It's also important to know what is the nature of the environment, you know, or where you met the girl. Is it during the day or is it at night? Or more specifically, is it in a high or low stimulus environment? You know, if she's at a bar or a club or, you know, a block party versus her just walking down the street or casually shopping, you're not going to be able to get away with the same level of sexualization. So it's important to gauge that. You also want to gauge the girl's vibe and general level of receptivity, you know, where she's at in the interaction. You know, is there banter? Is there at least some form of flirting? Is she um, being evasive, elusive? Is she just brushing you off or is she connecting with you? Is it a friendly vibe, you know, or is it a more flirtatious vibe? Not to mention her buying temperature or, you know, her level of arousal or stimulus. You want to be able to dictate the vibe of the interaction while also adjusting to her rhythm. Heather, you never struck me as a smoker. Really? What's your name? I, I'm not a smoker. I smoke when I drink, but I'm not even drinking. You're a social smoker. <laughs> yeah, I you're done 96. I went to elementary school. Yeah, I just dabble in the weeds. Are you guys all gone? What happened to your cigarettes, know. girl? I'm looking. Oh, I found it. Where are your cigarettes? I don't smoke. I've never smoked before. You're so progressive. 
Red hair? Yeah. I like this girl. <laughs> I love her too. <laughs> Redheads are my weakness. Oh yeah? Not for her, oh, she's, she's been bad. <laughs> and again, don't overdo it. This is something that's meant to be sprinkled in the interaction, all right? Just like with other elements of flirtation or sexual tension, this is not meant to be uh, the norm, otherwise you're gonna come off as, you know, too much, uh, unrelatable, uh, weird. Now, don't worry if you fuck up and miscalibrate, it's part of the process. As you get better at this, you're gonna develop a greater sense for when it is and isn't appropriate to inject these sexual themes or forms of sexualization, when to dial it back or when to amp it up, et cetera, et cetera. So just roll with it, try stuff out. It's gonna be uncomfortable if you're not you know, naturally good at this. It's important to remember with this, as with other elements of success with women or learning how to be an attractive man, is that you need to give yourself permission to do this, to be that guy. That guy who can you know, create sexual tension, who can sexualize a conversation, right? And not be pigeonholed as the friendly, nice guy, if that's something that you're accustomed to. Because a lot of guys suffer from this is they don't think they have somebody's permission to do this. So you must give yourself permission. So I was just shaving my head and I realized that I have to summarize this thing for you guys. I mean, we talked about a lot in this video. So here's what I want you to remember. First of all, sexualizing an interaction essentially means that you're planting the thoughts of you and the girl having sex into her head so she can imagine that happening, okay? Now, you do it because it helps amp up the sexual or romantic intent in the interaction. Remember, it's not necessary to build sexual tension, but it helps amp it up, so try it out. Now, how do you do it? There are four ways. You can use a seductive undertone coupled with seductive facial expressions you can use innuendo, you can use sexually explicit content, or you can use more sensualized touch and smell, okay? Also, you need to calibrate this, okay? So generally, you want to use it sparingly, but when you do, you want to gauge the girl's level of comfort, receptivity, investment, stimulus, uh, buying temperature, so that you don't come off as weird, okay? And use humor to ease yourself into it and to dilute the intensity. All right, thanks again for watching. I hope you got some value out of this. If you enjoyed it, please show some love and hit the like button. Subscribe and hit the notification button so you can get notified when we put out these videos. And lastly, if you have any comments that you wanna share about struggling to sexualize or anything that, you know, that I should clear up in the future, do so below. Thanks again, and until next time.